you, you mentioned like the session restoring stuff, the robustness stuff. Like we can talk about that as well, because that I think is also really, really cool. And that I had no idea was even like being worked on until I saw the blog you put out about it. Um, I guess uh -huh. just briefly explain like what what the issue was and yeah, how you were trying yeah. to go about it. I mean, so the issue we've seen is at X server. Hasn't been touched for decades. Super stable, mm -hmm. partly because of that. Mm -hmm. It's also got a lot of separation between that and the components that are being touched quite a lot and doing crazy things. The compositor, uh, because the compositor is doing all sorts of flashy 3D effects and it's doing all sorts of other jobs, doing a screen sharing, it's doing global shortcuts. The compositor is taking more and more jobs and you don't have that separation. You've got everything all together. And if it were to crash, mm -hmm. you lose everything. You lose all your stuff you've got going on. And it doesn't happen often, but it's enough. Uh, and it's just knowing that it can happen. Yep. And that's a sucky situation to be in. Uh, you don't want to just lose all your stuff. So we set out to try and fix that. And the solution's very simple. Mm -hmm. Instead of clients quitting when they detect that the compositor's gone, they don't. And obviously that part's easy. But you still need to um, c c come back and say, okay, I remember I, I, I was showing a window. Here's all the information for that window again. Mm -hmm. And if you're using a toolkit, which the vast, 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 vast majority of applications are doing, that's pretty trivial. Your, your toolkit knows about your current state that we were in. And it also knows how to cancel any operations that were happening if you were doing a drag and drop, if your mouse was held down, or if you had keyboard focus. So all we need to do is have your toolkit pretend a bunch of events have happened and then the applications come back. And I mean, I'm not going to do it right now, but I could run Quinn Wayland replace and applications come back. And most importantly, because transition is very important, I don't need to touch those applications. Yep. So I wrote support in Qt, and that doesn't have any external dependencies. That's going to be in Qt 6.6. .6. So any application using Qt 6, with maybe a few exceptions for some quirky whale and things, will just reconnect and restore. And even if you're using some KDE libraries, for other additional whaling things, they've all got your restart handling, it'll just come back, same as before. Other than your windows jumping about, you don't really notice it. Mm -hmm. But it's not just about cute. We also have patches for GTK and patches for SDL. Mm -hmm. The challenge with those is we also need patches in Mesa, well, not just Mesa, obviously in Video Driver, uh, some patches in the graphics stack because we need to tell them, here's a new pointer to a new connection. Right. And all they need to do is update one tiny number between here and this space. But sorting out that is, is challenging. Um, so we've got a proposed GL extension. I, I've, I've been putting it off because most about just dealing with all of the politics of it. Right, right. And my intention was... I just had some pushback with people saying, oh, this isn't going to work. I managed to make it work in Qt without any dependencies. So once we start seeing that, once people start seeing, well, it does, right? I've, I've tried it 20 times and it keeps coming back and I can't break it. Then when I submit these other merge requests, people are going to say, well, actually, it's, it's, it's fine. Let's do it. Let's, let's opt into this. So that's what my plan is. I'm quite a slow person. Because um, I've been doing this for, for years, just every now and again, just pushing things forward, trying to get a cute side in. And yeah, once that's more established, I'll just upload these other patches. And SDL has already merged some of this stuff already behind an ifdef. So SDL support's coming. And I had Counter Strike. Uh, CSGO? That's Counter Strike, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Um, I had. I had CSGO just surviving, just wow. crashing without any issues. And, um, and I technically had to patch that game to use a newer SDL, right. but I didn't patch the game itself because I can't. 
And, you know, super tax car, all these things, they, they just worked. And the patches are fairly minimal. Um, I've got, yes, yeah, got GTK patches, I was running Gnome Chess and all these other things. Something like Firefox might prove harder, mm-hmm. but Firefox also already has its own crash handling system. Yeah. So one of the design goals was to be flexible. Mm-hmm. If Firefox is, is better off just quitting and reopening, well, let's do that then. Mm-hmm. And we just need a small hook to reopen it again. Um, and maybe not have that prompt saying, do you want to restore your session? But that should be a relatively small patch. And, and, and then we're flexible with different approaches. And I think that's important. Get something in the toolkit to handle everything. If you want to do something on your own, do something on your own. Mm-hmm. Something like WL paste, a command line tool to paste something from your clipboard. If the Wayland compositor crashes, that exits. Who cares? It doesn't matter. And what matters is the file transfers and yes. all of the yes. more boring stuff. So it's not in the same concept. Windows does this under the hood, but it's under the hood. Um, because Wayland's so low level, I'm having to sort of reintroduce, re-implement it in a few places. But it's going to work. And it's going to... Hopefully, hopefully most users will never see it. But when you do need to see it, um, will be. And then I think that's having that safety net is important. Mm-hmm. That, but I, I, it's not. Uh, go, go, sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, no. So I, I, I've gone into just giving a presentation mode. I, I no, go it, ahead. Uh, that's fine. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Yeah. But and it's not just about crashes. I mean, the developer experience, mm-hmm. we're going twice as fast as we did before because I have my print statement. Like, uh, press the button, Quinn's come back. I don't have to reopen my ID. Why is Discord like this? Why does it keep doing this? It's done it again. <laughs> it does not want us to have this conversation. Go on, second. Let me just see something. Yeah, I'm looking at my 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 QPW graph. It says everything's still connected, so it's just it is just Discord that decides it wants to cut out the audio. That's really weird. Um, I thought it may have been like Pipewire dying, but there's nothing wrong on Pipewire's end from what I'm seeing. I don't know. Um. All right, I'm not. I'm not going to fix it from here. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, shall I continue? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so uh, it's not not just about crashing. The developer experience has increased significantly. I could just mm-hmm. well, add my print statement, restart, and just continue where I was, mm-hmm. getting at information. And I think it's helping why we've seen uh, our Wayland productivity just jump in recent weeks. We're catching up so much faster than we did before. And that's good. Plus, it opens up some new avenues that aren't just about crash handling. Um, I did some demos in my blog, which I know, I, know, I know you saw, of switching between different compositors at one time and having that just work. Yeah. And so I have some extra caveats in here. Mm-hmm. In the version that's being shipped in Qt, there is some detection of making sure that you can't replace a compositor because that could be a security right, hole, right. sort of. Right, we, we check your original sockets the same. Uh, so I just had to disable that code and disable that code in SDL to, to do this demo. So cheating slightly uh, from the ship code, but it's definitely doable. And with some added infrastructure, you could sort all of this out. Mm-hmm. And that's interesting. Maybe not just for globally, but if you could do this on a per application basis of saying, well, I've got this one application open, now send that down Waypipe and then bring it back or stick it on another compositor, which is purely uh, on, even on a, different GP, on a different GPU or anything like that. That's got some added perks. Like, I don't know where you want to take it. I just know it unlocks it so we can take it in some mm. of these places. Just having and, something there that's being shipped that then people are like, 
if you give people the option to mess with something, they will find a use case for it. A use case that you'll have no idea why anyone would ever want to do, but it, they find it useful for some reason. Abs absolutely. I, I think, it, yeah, I, I'm not going to tell people how this can be used. I think other people are going to tell me and <laughs> absolutely it's going to be interesting. And another thing I demoed, and again, this is the stuff about robustness handling, that stuff that's shippable quality, it's being shipped. This other stuff's the more researchy, not you can't use it right now state. Right, right, right. Of a checkpoint, checkpoint, checkpoint restore in user space. Mm hmm of having this application, suspending it to disk, and then moving it to another machine and then reopening it. Mm -hmm. All of this becomes possible. And I remember I was reading through your Creo docs and it kept seeing oh, X11, you can't do this. X11, or oh, you have to also nest an X11 server. And, oh, horrible hacks where you're using VNC to try and achieve this stuff. And they kept saying, oh, it's not possible. It's not possible. And it was like, well, it should be possible now, because I'm not. Because um, we don't actually. Need, if you can handle a compositor crashing, you can handle it being a new compositor when you when you reopen. It's the same mm. thing. You just need to close the socket. So there is actually a patch in Creo, which I didn't mention. Is a again cheating, right? There's a patch in Creo that says if you find a socket Wayland zero, instead of saying you can't handle it. Just close the socket. It'll be fine. And um, it's this tiny, tiny patch of close the socket. It'll be fine. And um, and then everything just unlocked. Everything just worked. Mm -hmm. And it has all the same caveats that using checkpoint restore and user space has. Mm -hmm. Like if if you checkpoint color paint and then update color paint and then try and resume it, it will just say no. Which is fair enough. Uh, and it does detect it. It does just say... It's a very long message that effectively is no, but with a lot more words. And and there's also some issues of if a PID's already being used and other caveats. But I think when you combine this with flat packs, mm -hmm. some of those problems start to go away. Everything's in its own PID namespace. Everything's in its own mount namespace. You can control what version of something you know exactly what's in that bundle. Right? There's not a lot of stuff coming from the system. And you can pin a version. So, and you can prevent the update or warn something. So this isn't a solution in itself. It's, we've unlocked this. Somebody might want to combine it with these other things and make something new. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't. Maybe it's something that will only exist for a few niche cases. But I think unlocking it, could be interesting.